water. It's literally just water. Water is essential to life and makes up 71% of Earth's surface. So, this video is for the Hydro Homies out there. Beyond its biological and ecological effects, and beyond its pure utility and environmental importance, water has a much wider definition. Religiously, water is associated with purity, life, and cleanliness. Scientifically, water is broken into its molecular level, simplifying to two hydrogens and one oxygen. Artistically, however, water is a subject of colorful and ambient beauty, as well as appalling destruction and chaos. The whole spectrum, really. It's honestly just ripe for artistic interpretation. Here's some examples. Water is colorless, yet comes in so many hues of blues and greens. Water is completely see-through, yet hides some of the most horrifying creatures in its depths. Water is responsible for catastrophic natural disasters, yet gives life to plants and animals. And finally, water can show a reflection like a mirror, yet you can completely fall into it. Fancy, huh? You can tell that water is versatile as a subject and that there's a lot to play with here. So much so that there exists a good amount of water-themed art pieces. I mean, look at the timeless classics. Hokusai's The Great Wave, Debussy's Sunken Cathedral, Ween's Ocean Man, classics. And of course, there is an artist that I've run into that has given water its own unique look. Today's featured Twitter artist is Mabrudi Bidamin, or Koyamori, the water artist. Koyamori's art is like a pure cleanse for my eyes, lush and dripping with ethereal beauty. Koyamori's works are trippy and almost psychedelic. Bees the size of birds, fish the height of elephants, Koyamori seems to love playing with surrounding proportions, and it's quite pleasing to look at. And that's not the only thing they seem to play with. The clothes explode with bouquets of flowers and animals. Waves of water cascade over the characters, becoming a part of their hair and body. Koyamori's usage of watercolor adds to this hazy, morphing atmosphere, and their color choice in general is gentle and soft. I would describe Koyamori's works as a watery, dreamlike interpretation of elements, flowers, and animals. Is what I would say if I were showing you the full picture. All the art that we've seen so far has been one side of the story. Koyamori has another type of style that they play with, and it's quite different from the pieces I've shown you so far. It's called chibi. Yeah, chibi. As in small, chubby characters or animals with stubby limbs. They're really cute, rotund, and squishy looking. I'll take your whole stock. Koyamori draws these little guys as bears, cats, ghosts, plants, or just blob creatures. They're expressive, overly emotional, and charming as a whole. Drawn in various environments, ranging from the inside of fruits to basic eating utensils, this is a contrasting style from the realistic looking flowers and animals we've seen so far. I think it would be easy to be dismissive and say these drawings are simple and childish, which they kind of are, but let's see what Koyamori does with them. These chibi, more cartoonish looking creatures are placed in detailed green foliage. Other times they're in lakes, floating next to lily pads. They're like a little sprite you'd imagine existed when you were a kid. Despite looking derpy or silly, I'd say these pieces are just as artistic as Koyamori's more quote-unquote serious art pieces. In its own unique way, the chibi art style makes the detail of the environment around it that much more interesting. If I were to overanalyze this in an English teacher type of way, I'd say that a lot of this art is close to an homage to a more childish side of oneself. Here's what I mean. Take the cats in this piece for example. Cats don't exactly look like this, yet we recognize this as a cat. That's because this is a symbolic drawing. Symbolic drawings communicate an idea without the details. The ears, the mouth, the tail, and the four limbs are more than enough to tell us that this is a cat. Symbolic drawings are generally what children start with when they begin drawing. Now look at this cat. The proportions seem a lot more accurate. Its body isn't too round or long, the head's not too big, and the face doesn't look cartoonish. It looks much closer to a real cat. And that's because this is a descriptive drawing. Descriptive drawings flesh out the details of an object to look closer to what is actually being looked at. This is closer to a real cat. 
Going back to Koyomori's art as a whole, despite being able to draw detailed, vibrant pieces, they still add these cutesy, simpler creatures because they want to. It's alright to embrace the sillier, weirder, cuter side of the craft, even if it looks less professional. Whatever professional means. I mean, look at parody songs or latte art. They're all valid in their own unique ways, and there's a place for them. Koyamori is clearly a professional artist, but to me, what makes them interesting is their ability to play with their art. I know I'm looking too into it, but it doesn't feel like they've lost themselves in the pursuit to improve, which is more than a lot of people can say. So I'll leave with this. As all of us gradually get older and take our artistic craft more seriously with each passing new year, I think it's worth leaving room for the playful, childlike side within you, because it's what started you on your journey since the very beginning. Anyways, that's all I've got. Here's to a better year. Bye.